advisor. Canada has reached an agreement to purchase another 20 million doses of the pfizer Botech vaccine COVID-19. Uh, Prime Minister Justin Trudeau said today the, the doubles the numbers of doses the country has lacked it from the U.S. pharmaceutical giant and brings the total number scheduled to arrive this year from two approved vaccine makers to 80 million enough to vaccinate the entire Canadian population according to the required two doses. Uh, from our agreement with Pfizer and Moderna, alone we are on track to have every Canadian who wants to vaccinate receives on one by September. Trudeau said at a press conference outside through the call, we're going to continue working to see if we can get a few more doses because all Canadians want this to move forward as quickly as possible. And has now committed to buying 40 million doses from the Botech vaccine and 40 million doses from the Moderna with the option to purchase another 36 million from the Pfizer Botech if chooses six million are expected to arrive by the end of March, even to immunize three million people. Trudeau announced come days after the pharmaceutical uh, said the federal government has chosen not to exercise its option to buy up to 16 million more doses of Moderna COVID-19 vaccine. At a separate news conference, Anden said she chose not to purchase those remaining doses because Moderna couldn't guarantee delivery before September. As of Monday night, more than 38 million thousand doses of COVID-19 vaccine have been administrated in Canada, out of 54 million 8,000 doses distributed to provinces and territories. The federal government has come under enormous pressure to speed up the delivery of vaccine as Canada experienced a post-holiday surge in cases and deaths and as fears as rise about the spread of coronavirus strain, a first identified in the UK that is more transmissible than other variables. Uh, several provinces are warning that they are administrating doses faster than they are being delivered Premier Jason Kenney of, of Alberta said Monday that Alberta could exhaust its vaccine supply as early next week, while BC Provincial Health Minister uh, Officer Dr. Bonnie Henry said the province would run out of by the end of the year. Ahead of the expected Thursday delivery, the federal government uh, pushed a delivery schedule this week that includes shipment dates and numbers of doses expected to be delivered to provinces and territories until the end of February. We're continuing to work with various vaccine companies to accelerate to move forward to get more doses for Canadians as quickly as possible, Trudeau said. Right now, we've been able to give very clear direction and information to the provinces on how many vaccine doses they will be receiving. Every week between now and end of February, which allows them to plan up to manage the rollout process. Separately today, the National Advisory Community Immunization concluded the second doses of Botech, Biotech, and Moderna COVID-19 vaccine should be given no more than six weeks after the first. The recommendation was announced by Dr. Carnell, uh, chair of the community, during the interview granted on Tuesday to the Radio Canada program. A few hours before the publication of the committee recommendation, the recommendation intended uh, for Public Health Agency of Canada allow for long pauses between doses that can manufacture recommended. So these are the cases that we have so far that are going to be uh, in Canada, and that's how the vaccine are going to be uh, distributed. Now we're going to be going to world and talking about what's happening. Um, Donald Trump, a norm, shattering presentation, uh, risking earning new uh, the restrictions over the coming days that will train him into his post presidency and far uh, into the afterlife. The U.S. president. Uh, political will carry the legacy of two upcoming votes in the House of Representatives, including an impeachment in the fallout of the last week mob attack on the, on the U.S. Capitol that he accused of in spring. 
Trump will soon likely become the only U.S. president impeached twice, the only president formally targeted for explosion under the 25th Amendment, and possible but for far less likely the only president convicted by the Senate and barred uh, from the evening seeking again. Uh, the first in the series of the votes expected Tuesday night after 7.30 p.m. Eastern Time in the House. Uh, the president represents the amendment a threat uh, to our constitution, our country, and American people, and we must be removed, uh, and he must be removed from the office immediately, House Speaker Nancy Pelosi, a Democrat, said Monday. The president's threat to America is urgent, so... Uh, and so too will be our nation. Pelosi laid out two-step plan that begins the vote on 25th Amendment to the U.S. Constitution enacted in the wake of John F. Kennedy assassination. It allows a change in leadership if body of Congress, the vice president, and more than the half of the cabinet agree the president. Given the slim chance of Vice President Mike Pence and the majority of the cabinet turning on the president, Democrats have prepared Plan B for the next day, an article of impeachment to be voted on as early as Wednesday that accuses the president of enacting an assurance uh, for his role in the attack of the U.S. Capitol last week. The resolution noted that the Trump addressed a rally shortly before his supporters mounted the attack and says he made statement that encouraged the foreseeable result in the lawless action at the Capitol. Impeachment appears to have the vote to pass the House based on Democrat support alone, although it could also attract a few Republicans. The question May will ask, and Republicans are certainly asking, is why now Trump is slated to leave office in a week and just promised a peaceful transition. The main Republican argument against impeachment is that this move will drop a match on a country that's political tender. Uh, that your box already shows signs of blowing. The FBI warned of plans for armed protesters across the country. There is a chatter on social media about military attack. At least 10,000 National Guard troops are being called to the Capitol and even the Washington mountains is being shut down in threats. Republicans are urging the rivals to move on and to let President-elect Joe Biden launch his presidency under identifying terms Focus on enacting his own agenda. Even one Democrat senator thinks this is a poor idea. Uh, Joe Machichin, a West Virginia, called this is a terrible moment for impeachment. There is still ill-advised, told Fox News, he predicts impeachment with far gain in a Senate trial, just like did last year, and only sour the start of Biden's presidency. Two arguments for impeaching now. Impeaching supporters offer two rights to that. One is a principle and the other is practical. One matter of principle, they say the current U.S. president richly deserves this. That will uh, stain his legacy and says it also establishes necessary boundaries to future presidential behavior. Some legal scholars interviewed agree Trump de deserves this sanction. Uh, the second impeachment will, will certainly that Donald Trump will be listed the last on the list of the best to the worst president said. Without question, Trump, the worst president in American history, he said the president, in his opinion, has probably committed five or six known impeachable acts throughout his presidency. Then there is a practical reason, and it has more to, to do with the four-year period ahead of us than the four years we've just witnessed. It's about whether Trump can be stripped of his power going forward, a power that uh, terms in the part of his ability to run for office again. It's unnoticeable that the impeachment article drafted by Democrat lawmakers refers to the Constitution Fourth Amendment written after the Civil War if a forbid anyone engaged uh, in the insurrection from ever again seeking political office. So if the House impeaches Trump, Senate Republicans will have two, two hot potatoes to handle. 
One is obviously question of whether to convict Trump. The second, arguable, more uh, questionable, if the Senate did not actually convict him with a penalty would it impose. That punishment could include disqualification for future office, which would require a simple majority vote according to his historical non-presidential impeachment cases. Don't automatically assume Senate Republicans will be as supportive of Trump as the last time he was impeached. One observer suspect many Washington Republicans would love to bury Trump politically. Legal ethic scholar Clark said they would have a variety of motivations for wanting to sideline Trump, including those with their own ambitions to run for president in 2024. I think, I think very few people in the Senate, including Republicans, want Donald Trump running for president again or exercising leadership in the country, uh, said uh, Kamraham, a professor of law and ethic at Georgia State University. Republicans were scared of Trump supporters. He says the current wording mistake said providing the somewhat inciting. Republicans have another reason to fear going along with this, one that speaks to the gravity of this American political moment. And it involves angrily people like the mob that stormed the Capitol. A rookie congressman from Mich Michigan, Republican Peter, wrote in about the terror uh, his colleagues faced. He said he knows one lawmaker who voted to overturn the election results last week, Wednesday night, at a fear that family members might be harmed. So there's, gonna, there's going to be an impeachment that is going to be coming and is going to be uh, uh, crazy. And tomorrow will be the impeachment day that we're going to be seeing. And we will see a lot of that happening in the impeachment. That's going to be a uh, thing. U.S. President Donald Trump is advising to be careful of what he wish for as House lawmakers consider a solution calling on Vice President Mike Pence to invoke the 25th Amendment to, the, to declare the president unable to serve. Pence is not expected to take any such action regardless of the vote in the House this evening. Trump said Tuesday as he visited the southern border wall in Texas that the 25th Amendment is a zero risk to me but will come back to hunt Joe Biden and the Biden administration. He added, as the expression goes, be careful of what you wish for. Earlier, as he left Washington for town, uh, Texas, Trump took no responsibility for his part in formatting the violence at the U.S. Capitol last week, despite his comments encouraging supporters to march on the Capitol and his praise for them while they were still carrying out the assault. People thought that what I said was totally appropriate, Trump said. He added in his remarks this afternoon, we believe in the rule of law, not in violence or rioting." a different tone from the message he sent his supporters last week when he told them he loves them and they will be very special. The ring through the halls of Congress sent lawmakers of both parties and Trump owned vice president into hiding crowds called for Mike Pence launching for his role overseeing the vote count. The scene also admired of the National Republic of the peaceful transition of power. At least five people died, including one Capitol Police officer. Uh, federal prosecutors Tuesday said that they are looking at bringing significant cases involving possible and con conspiracy theory charges in connection to the riots. U.S. Attorney General Michael uh, Sherwin who provided an update on criminal charges at the Justice Department news conference said that some of the missed charges brought against the people who breached the Capitol were intended a placeholder count and that more serious charges including are possible. He said Justice Department has created a specialized task force that will look at everything from travel to movement of the individuals. In the days leading up to the sixth uh, January vote, Trump encouraged his supporters to disseminate on Washington, D.C., promising a wild rally support of his baseless claims of election fraud, despite his own administration finding to the contrary. Speaking for more than an hour to a crowd in Ellipse 
that day, true, uh, Trump encouraged supporters to to fight like hell and suggests that Republican lawmakers would need more courage not to step up and overturn the will of voters to grant him another term in office. He also suggested he would join them in marching on the Capitol. As Trump wrapped up, thousands of his supporters were already heading to the Capitol, where lawmakers had convened to court the election votes. Trump headed to a limited Texas city and Rio Valley, the U.S. Mexico border, the site of the 72 kilometer of border uh, wall in his administration uh, building. Trump visited, uh, visit came as he spent the final days of his presidency isolated and starting down the prosper of second impeachment. But Trump has repeatedly resisted their efforts as he has remained in the White House behind closed doors, consumed of baseless allegations of voter fraud and con con conspiracies. A few dozen Trump supporters rallied hours before he visited the Rio Grande. Um, so I can continue reading on more, but he's leaving office and that's good. And we'll see hopefully uh, Joe Biden when he uh, gets sworn in next Wednesday, hopefully when he sworn in, he sworn in safely. And I wish him a good, a good, uh, uh, I wish him the best when uh, I'm so worried for him, uh, because especially what happened last Wednesday, it was scary what we saw in the White House. And hopefully that doesn't happen again on the day of um of Biden's uh, inauguration day. Hopefully that doesn't happen that day. Uh, now I'm going to be moving on talking about um, Ford government. Uh, there's a lot of things that happened on, on Ontario today too. Uh, so Ontario declares state of emergency issues stay at home over beginning Thursday. Uh, Ontario has declared a state of emergency to surge of COVID-19 cases and issues a stay-at-home order that takes effect Thursday at 12 a.m. Eastern Time, Premier Ford announced. The stay-at-home order issued Tuesday does not affect essential activities such as accessing health care, shopping for groceries, exercising, or doing essential work. However, the new measures do include restriction, the hours of operation for non-essential retail, retail stores, such as hardware stores, to between 7 a.m. and 8, 8 p.m. Eastern time. Our province is critic, Ford said. The system is on the brink of collapse. It is on the brink of being overwhelmed. As a part of the new measures, outdoor organized public gathering and social gathering are further restricted to no more than five people with limited exp expectations. People are required to wear a mask or face covering in indoor areas of businesses or organizations that are open. And wearing a mask or face cover covered is now recommended outdoors when you can't physically distance more than two meters. The province is also set schools in five hot spot regions Toronto, Hamilton, Peel, uh, York, and Win Windsor, Essex will not reopen for in-person learning until February 10th. Community transmission is widespread in our hospital and is our long-term care homes and is our workplace, Health Minister Christine Elliott said Tuesday. Er earlier, the province released grim new modeling figures that shows the death in Second wave are expected to exercise first wave total if Ontarians don't significantly reduce their contact with others. Almost 40% of the province's long-term care homes now have active outbreak of virus, including to figure released Tuesday since the start of the new year's 198 long-term care residents and two staff members have died. And the modeling suggests there will be actually be more deaths in long-term care in the pandemic second wave compared with the first. About one quarter of Ontario hospitals have no ICU capacity left, while another quarter have only one or two beds available at any given time, Brown said. He added that the hospital with very limited or no ICU capacity are spread throughout the province. This is no longer an issue of one or two regions. Ontarians moved into a province-wide lockdown on December 26th with tighter restrictions on gatherings and closures of non-essential businesses. The updated of modeling and new restrictions come 
on the heels of Ontario hitting record highs in the new COVID-19 cases, deaths, and hospitalizations since the start of the new years. On Tuesday, Ontario reported 2,903 new cases and 41 new deaths, bringing the province's official death total to 5,053 behind only Quebec. Elliott said the new restrictions include eight people who, who became affected with a variant of coronavirus that was first detected in the United Kingdom, bringing to 14 number of cases of the variant identified in Ontario. Researchers have shown the strain to be more transmissible than the one common strain circulating in Canada. It's not believed to be more deadly. The numbers of COVID-19 patients in hospital increased to a record of 1,701. Of those, 385 are in intensive care and 262 require the use of the volunteer to breathe. As of 2.45 p.m. Eastern on Tuesday, Canada have reported 67,003,375 cases of COVID-19 with 81,654 uh, cases considered active. A CBC News tally of deaths stood at 17,188. The federal government has reached an agreement to purchase another 20 million doses of the Biotech COVID-19 vaccine, Prime Minister Justin Trudeau announced Tuesday. In Atlantic Canada, Prince Edward Island reported one new cases of COVID-19 on Tuesday, along with one new recovery. The number of active cases in the province stayed at eight. Newfoundland and Labrador reported no new cases. Nova Scotia announced one new cases in the province on Tuesday. The province also announced mandatory testing for rotational worker returning to Nova Scotia after working in another part of the country. The higher numbers of cases, especially in Alberta, where many Nova Scotians work, is considering Premier Stephen McNeil said at a press brief. New Brunswick reported 17 new cases of infection and two new deaths. On Tuesday, health officials said that the death involves one person in their 70s and one in their 80s who were residents of the retreatment faculty in St. John's. In Quebec, Premier Francois Legault is standing by his decision to impose an overnight curfew as well to reopen elementary schools on Monday in spite of the recent surge in cases and hospitalizations. The province reported 1,934 new cases and 47 new deaths on Tuesday. The number of people hospitalization to the COVID-19 rose to 1,497 people, including 221 in intensive care. Saskatchewan announced 248 new cases and five more deaths. The provincial government also announced extending the public health rules until at least January 29 due to current transmission rates. British Columbia health officials announced 1,475 new cases of COVID-19 in the province over the last three days, along with 22 deaths, which pushes BC death total to over 1,000. So these are, this is what's happening in Canada, and this is what's happening uh, everywhere, including Canada and everywhere. But that's all I have for today. Uh, this, is, this is the news. This is everything. It's supposed to be an hour, but today I came late to, to tell the news. So hopefully tomorrow it will be an hour at 2 p.m. Mountain Time. Join me tomorrow at 2 p.m. Mountain Time to, to, to do the news and to do those things. I hope everybody have a great day, and uh, I wish you good luck and stay safe.